All right, welcome to another edition of uh, Coach's Talk. Uh, today is going to be covering the topic of uh, exercise myths, uh, something that we deal with daily, uh, and I wouldn't say battle with daily, but uh, in our community, it is. Uh, it's battle. something that we have to like constantly uh, bring up to, to members that say something that uh, they've heard from another person that may be wrong or something that they received online information-wise that was incorrect. So typically exercise myths are going to cause people to have poor exercise strategies or to uh, create uh, excuses to why something they're, they're doing is not productive. Or uh, for instance, one topic that we recently saw online was uh, lactic acid causing soreness and foam rollers uh, will, will reduce soreness in the muscles by getting rid of lactic acid. And if you do any research, um, you'll know that the actual culprit is something called muscle acidosis. So this is something that can be readily disproven um, by the exercise community that does the research and has the science. So we're gonna tap into that and then we'll kind of uh, segue into how to be better about learning your information and who you should talk to and how you should, should learn. So let's just open it up. Everybody has their own topic that they wanna talk about. So let's just start it off by, by mentioning yours and going through it. All right. Um, I'll start by saying that I work with a lot of youth, yep. obviously, and there are plenty of times where I'm doing an assessment with a, let's say, an 11 or a 12 year old, and the f I can see, like, I can see it in the parents' eyes. Yeah. The first thing they're going to ask me is, "Are you sure it's okay for them to weight lift?" Yeah. Um, they hammer me with, "Is it going to stunt their growth?" Um, and they hammer me with, "Are you sure it's healthy for them?" Uh, they, they hammer me with, what's another one? Oh yeah, uh, bones and joints. Bones and joints will be terrible <laughs> growing up. Um, so they'll be five foot zero. <laughs> they'll become a caveman. Yes, a full Neanderthal. Yes, and so I have to slowly but steadily tell them that we do not put a barbell on their back their first day that they are at match performance. We will <laughs> not be back squatting. Uh, we will not be deadlifting. We will not be bench pressing. <laughs> Despite what you may think, we might not be doing these things at match performance with your nine-year-old child. Um, so, I guess I'll come back with what I what I uh, what I refute that with is that we start kids obviously by form is first technique. My goal is to have them with perfect technique so that by the time they do hit puberty and maturity, yeah. they have the developed form to then put on the mass. Um, to kind of build them up to a spot where they have the technique to go into their maturity stage in life. Um, <clears throat> and then there are zero studies that show that weightlifting in youth, like they, the myths say breaking growth plates or fracturing growth plates, yeah. therefore stunting growth. But there's actually nothing that says that um, in research. So I find that very interesting that somehow through, and we can talk about this later, how these, how this information gets out. Yeah. Somehow this info gets out that there's stunting growth. They see one article and then what I find interesting, what I wanted to talk about was that people see these myths, what we call myths, yeah. but they treat it like a Bible. Yeah. yeah. So they see one article, mostly because it's from like NBC or somewhere big. They see this article and then they say, okay, that has to be the truth because I saw it on the internet. It's just no outside and searching. then it's yeah and then it almost is it's hard for me to uh, go against that article I mean it's not hard for me now but yeah uh, it seems like a lot of people are very set in their own mind and what they see something on the internet and it takes a lot yeah. for us to say that's not correct yeah and you almost have to bring in like all the science and all of your knowledge yeah. just to refute that so the big one that I see day to day is people even now when I like go back to my family yeah. and I say I work with a lot of youth and they immediately are like, oh, is that even healthy for them? You know, yeah. Yeah. and people will talk to me about it saying, oh, you started doing pushups and pull-ups when I was, you know, nine years old. I'm five foot five. Yeah. My mom is five foot one and my dad <laughs> is five foot six. Yeah. Like, yeah. But it, people was, have, it was the body weight squats. Yeah. yeah but people say like, oh, it must be the pushups <laughs> and the backflips you were doing yeah. when you were 10 years Bradley old. Gravity pushed you down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. That's a big one I deal with day to day. I think the easy refute to that for a lot of guys too is like if they were to get injured, hmm. what type of you know movements would they be doing to correct the injury? They'd be yeah. exercising. Yeah. So when somebody's injured, it's it's not considered exercise; it's considered rehab. Right. 
but you can be <clears throat> preemptive with that and help a kid develop strong hips through various body weight or like low intensity threshold exercises mm -hmm. and just teach him, uh, you know, like we always tell our kids that we're going to teach you movement, not necessarily lifting. Oh, well, lifting is earned. How important the motor yeah. patterning is. Yeah. I mean, you could do that for four years. Yeah. And then if you hit maturity, you're, you're at such an accelerated yeah. place yeah. rather than if you start lifting when you're 15, let's mm -hmm. say you're at like a, such a deficit compared to someone who starts when they're 10, yeah. learns the motor patterns and then is ready to go they're, they're, when they hit maturity. They're ready to be a lifter at the right age. Right. Yeah. And right. Like, we, we even consider uh, youth athletes as anybody still prepubescent. Yeah. So like most of our kids aren't cleared for what, 16, 17? You know, that's how we say the whole playlist is open to you. Right. For men, you know, girls mature a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, that myth is, is something that, you know, is prevalent in every community, I think. Um, especially America's lifting culture. People are very paranoid about getting kids in the weight room early. Right. Um, but it's, it's not so much a, and I think you detest this, it's not so much an exercise issue, it's a maturity issue. Right. Yeah. Is it worth the pain of a membership to have a kid be trained by a trainer? Or should he just be off his butt climbing trees? Right. Uh, playing with his friends, not specializing in sports. That's probably the bigger issue. Mm -hmm. As you have a sixth grader now saying, I'm a baseball player, I'm only going to do baseball. Or I'm a hockey player, I'm only going to do hockey. They're not getting cross-training. They're not being exposed to different, uh, you know, ways of challenging themselves. Playing, yeah. Yeah. I think we should put windows or knock down the big wall from the lobby and then they'll look at the program and see, it. <clears throat> oh, they're doing a, a pull-up paired with like a soccer kick with Coach Shake. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, but they're a basketball player. They should be working on their triceps and their jump <laughs> shot. And he's like, oh, they're doing hand-eye drills with tennis balls. And yeah. Right. What is all this madness yeah. in here? Yeah. And this, well, and they're having fun? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, spec this? the specification of sport doesn't help either with the youth. Yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, exercise myth, youth members will stunt their growth. Uh, you can confidently look in that camera and say that is an absolute fallacy. That's not true. Myth. Busted. <laughs> Myth busted. Order on the court. <laughs> Go ahead, Mikey. Number two, um, my biggest beef, we get it all the time, especially in season, is men and women alike, yep. is I don't want to get too bulky, mm. that hole, or I don't want to get too big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is a legitimate concern, I suppose, if you're one of those freakish athletes that you do one set of bicep curls and all of a sudden you look like Arnold. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, especially in the women community yeah. and in the men alike, just bringing light to how much work it actually takes to hypertrophy or gain muscle size. Yeah. How much nutritional consistency, focus it takes, the routine, the consistent lifting, yeah. the progressive overload, the specific demands of the exercise, yeah. what kind of fatigue you're creating within the workout. Yeah. Three times a week for 45 minutes of an in-season lift where you have a 10 minute warm up and a 10 minute cool down <laughs> and four sets of five deadlift yeah. and three sets of eight pull ups is not going to get you too big to the point where you can't swing a bat and you are just a behemoth, mm. okay? And on the women's side of things, we get this one pro arguably more, right? Yeah. And this is like a legitimate concern because mm -hmm. of <clears throat> some of the women you see in CrossFit, they're shredded. Yeah. And that is awesome. We love that. Yeah. But those women are different. They, some of them are supplementing with some, some things that are slightly unregulated in yeah. certain sports, right? Yes. The powerlifters, the powerlifting community, raw and unraw, and geared and all that. Or they might be genetically predisposed. They, yeah. I to, mean, people right. see like somebody like Brooke Entz yeah. and they say, that's disgusting. What are you doing? But... Like she trains three times a day yeah. and she is like ridiculously nurtured in terms of sponsorships from nutrition companies and yeah. supplements. I mean, that's she's, her job. Her job is, is to, to train that. 40 she's, hours a week. She's probably really good at it. You specialize that she's way. She's fine. You're yeah. probably if you think you're really going to get that, it. if you think you're going to look like that three, four, five times a week for an hour of like general training. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> like I, we work like, I work to look like Coach Jake. I yeah, wish. Okay? Like, we <laughs> want to look like this guy. But it's taken him 26 years yeah. to have this beautiful manliness body, right? Like, yeah. it's not going to happen in a six-week exercise manual three times a week. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. It, it takes an extreme amount of dedication. And it's actually an insult to the bodybuilders and the, the physique folks and those, those individuals that yeah. train their right. butts off to get that way. 
Yeah. You're right. actually blatantly insulting them by saying that. To even think you could get that. Yeah. Job. Like, yeah. right. If, yeah. I think the insecurity of like, for instance, females specifically is because our side, especially if you look at any female magazine, is is toned down, slimmed yeah. down. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a myth in itself, is you the know? tone thing. But that's like in their mind, right? Yeah, like they there's want, just a stigma of what you should look like. Yeah, what you should look like. Yeah. Right. So any noticeable size change in muscle density, or if they feel like they're getting too like lean, mm-hmm. they create that, that, like, I'm getting too big, you yeah. know? It's, it's just it's, like a thing. It's really just a social, a so, social thing more than an issue more than anything. But, right. I mean, we can go down the rabbit hole of the toned and the weight, like the weight on the scale means yeah. progress or regress. But yeah. like mm-hmm. you can ask certain people, and we've all been in the situation where maybe they gained a pound or two or whatever, or they didn't lose weight, but they feel great. Their joints are healthy. They are excelling at their sport. They were injury free, whatever, and all these great things. But yeah. But oh no, I didn't lose weight. Yeah. It's like, yeah. well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, I mean, it matters in certain areas, but. We can go down that one too and say that's a myth, and that just kind of ties all into that whole realm of like that that social mentality of I don't want to get too big, I want to yeah, yeah. tone, I want to yeah. lose weight, gain weight, whatever. Yeah, so like it just it's so much more of a story than that. Yeah. Right. So girls that hit me with the I don't want to get too big, I just immediately come back with, Do you want a nicer butt? <laughs> Do you want a little bit lo- better looking shoulders? Do you want yeah. better posture? Yeah. Do you want to be overall more attractive? Healthier does knees, that stronger yeah. feet? Does yeah. that more confident? Does that sound intriguing to you? Yeah. Then lift weights. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're not I mean, gonna, unless you're yeah. sticking something in your butt cheek, you're not gonna get too big. I promise. No, you. you need to, you need to do some. It's just they don't have enough testosterone to really elicit right. such large yeah. right. mass gains right. hormonally. Yeah. Unless it's, they are supplementing, which you know, mm-hmm. is is a possibility for some people in it. But I'd say majority of them are probably just getting defined like that too mm-hmm. because they're just built genetically to excel at that sport right yeah but they're I mean, they're the one percent right pick yeah. that person like my argument back to that that girl is like what what's your representation of like too big or too bulky or i don't want to look like that right pull up anybody yeah. right any single person you can go if you look deep into that person's training regimen their nutrition yeah. regimen their sleep habits yeah their yeah. lifestyle you wouldn't be able to handle it. It yeah. is freakish. Yeah. It is dialed to the point where it, some people would call it an obsessive compulsive disorder. Right. Yeah. The amount of focus, the amount of determination it takes to like look like that person that you're saying, I don't want to work out because yeah. I don't want to look like that. Yeah. Like Believe me, you have to work out eight times harder than you're doing right now to even look half that way. But all they're seeing is that person doing a bench yeah. press on Instagram yeah. saying, if I bench press, I'm going to look like Brooke Hens. Yeah, and like Brooke Hens is a girly girl. Right. You ever yeah. listen to her podcast? She's hilarious. Yeah. She's not a manly, beefy individual. She's, yeah. she's a chick, just like you guys. Yeah. She wears makeup. She goes out. She has mm-hmm. fun. She does all the girly <laughs> things. Like, I would love to hang out with Brooke. Yeah. 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 She's hilarious. I think I'm the only one that doesn't know her. I got to tell you. She also played Wonder Woman <laughs> okay. in a movie. Yeah. Says, oh, she's the recent Wonder Woman? I think or? I think it's the most recent one, yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to talk about one, one case. Swanee. Michael Swanstrom. Yeah. <laughs> he lifted for two hours a day. His nutrition Funny. was perfect. He slept perfectly. This is the only case I can think of where he got to baseball season and he came to me and Nate and he was a meatball. Yeah. <laughs> talking meatball. And he goes, guys, I feel a little bit... I did it. <laughs> yeah. I've done it now. I've done the impossible. <laughs> oh no. I feel, it worked. <laughs> I feel like I don't quite swing the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, And we're like, perfect. And it took two weeks for us to be like, Boom, 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 dial it down. Yeah. Bam, okay, now you're baseball ready. Yeah. But I yeah. mean, even if you get to that point, you can always like well, and if change you, if the regimen. watching this, if you know Swanee, like you know the, yeah, the, the right. like he's just a, he I loves mean, lifting. He's in there all the time. Yeah. He's like a, he's a true <laughs> meathead. Like, yeah. He yeah. loves that. He's been right? lifting since he was in seventh grade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like he's yeah. a G. Yeah. And yeah. he's been working for, yeah. yeah, seventh grade, you're what? Yeah. 12 years old, 14 years <laughs> right. old. Like he's been working for, eight, nine years at it. Yeah. Right. It's not like it was like, oh, my last six week exercise manual, I got too big. Yeah. Right. It was like my last six years, maybe yeah. I might right. have yeah. got and a little the other bigger thing, than I expected. <laughs> that's the other thing too, is you can say, it, it obviously doesn't happen overnight. So if someone says, I don't want to get too bulky, be like, okay, we're going to go week by week. If you yeah. ever look in the mirror and say you're getting too bulky, then we'll take care of it. Yeah. 
But I guarantee that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I, I like we'll to go. I like to go back to to like just like what we know. Like uh, when somebody comes up to me, like cause I, I I've actually had in the last year like a girl lift for six to eight weeks. She's like, I'm worried about getting big. Mm. You just break it down to them, like you know, like how we know the body adapts to exercise. Yeah. You know that the initial yeah, strength gains are neurological. Mm-hmm. The next adaptation your body makes is going to be adding muscle density to the same volume. The very last add-on is going to be building more muscle, and that's the hardest adaptation that's to get to. Probably that's 12 to 15 weeks before you start seeing like a legitimate like yeah. increase in muscle size. Yeah. So if yeah. you get to somebody at that time, it's very easy to like just explain to them. That's completely. If you can have that conversation early, I think with some of your female athletes, it's just like there's no way uh, that your body is making that adaptation yet because we just know that it's not happening. Right. So, like, I think it it all depends on, like, when you're accessing it. You know, there are some girls who, you know, if they wear very extremely, like, tight-fitting clothes, um, you can be sensitive to the fact that they may be feeling a little bit snugger in their clothes. But, again, it's like, you know, we tend to grade things in, you know, millimeters. You know, it's like nobody's going to see you walk down the street and say, oh, my God, that person's huge (laughs) from a millimeter of maybe a little bit tighter (laughs) tighter jeans or whatever. So, I think it's it's a hard give and take, but there's definitely the, the myth that females oh, yeah. will put on yeah. uh, too much bulk if they lift, yeah, like mm-hmm. traditional lifting. And I mean, most of the time you do have to explain that educational piece and say like, that extra muscle or that, that extra density is protecting your tendons, protecting yeah. your, like your, your better shock absorbers, yeah. you have better, right. better body armor if you're in a yeah. contact type sport like basketball. Yeah, You're more resilient to injury overall. So like what's yeah. more important? What you kind of look like in the mirror right now at age 16 or yeah. your yeah. Ability to resist an ACL or an ankle sprain yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So, and we're dealing with a lot of uh, you know kids who are changing just physique wise yeah. from just nature. Tough little right. four, five, six year stretch of yep. body changes and confidence, and mm-hmm. high school in general is a it's a mental breakdown. But if you're <laughs> but if you're a female and you're chasing a body goal and you're looking to change your body composition and you're looking to cement weight loss gain, like you know. For the long term, uh, we can all confidently say that weight loss is probably the best mechanism to really create a higher metabolism and create a better body profile, right? Weightlifting, you said. Yeah, weightlifting. Yeah. So yeah. not just doing cardio, yeah. like you yeah. want to be in the weight room. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like the research is endless on that. Yeah. 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 So, cool. Well, Myth number two. <laughs> Slice, chopped, busted. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, more just the recent uh, issues since we've had a lot more adults is that, uh, you know, especially dealing with a lot of uh, my grandmother's 90 now, um, my dad's and his, you know, coming towards his 60s, is that weightlifting is bad for certain ages. And the weird thing about this myth is everybody has a different age where it starts. Mm-hmm. But when you're considered old, you're not supposed to jump. You're not supposed to lift yeah. weights. You're not supposed to load the bar up. You're not supposed to have like weight goals. It should all just be like, you know, Pilates and stretching and yoga after you get to a certain age. Um, and I, I think that myth is a hard one for us as a society because we're getting people who are reaching later ages more consistently. Right. And I always like to tell people like if you want to, you know, look at that myth, go to an assisted living home and tell everybody in that assisted living room to, hit, to raise their hand and ask who had an effective strategy towards exercise their whole life. <laughs> you know, who's been lifting weights. I guarantee you're probably going to see zero hands in there. Yeah. Um, but we know that, like, you know, just from bones, for instance, we can bust that right away by saying that uh, the, the way that your bones trigger more density is by receiving progressive impact or progressive loading stress mm-hmm. to trigger those osteoblasts to create more bone density. Mm-hmm. So. As a lifting coach, it's hard because you have this myth that says, okay, after I get to a certain age, don't load the bar up. I'm not supposed to. That could hurt me. I'm old. And you're saying, okay, well, I don't want you to have osteoporosis, especially <laughs> for our females again, about to be in menopause. You get one chance to build a skeleton before menopause, and then it gets eternally harder. Mm. So that myth for me is probably the most prevalent that I've seen in the last you know, five to six years, just since we've had more adults, and I've seen my own family aging. Mm-hmm. It's because they'll always ask me about that. So, and the funny part about that too is if you get to a point where you're you're struggling physically, whether it's like a brittle bones or whatever yeah. injury or something, like a um, occupational therapist, yeah. and they come to your house and they do like exercise with you. Yeah, it's all real world stuff, like learning to brush your teeth or reaching up and stuff. But it's mm-hmm. like grab a can of soup and you're gonna like raise it five times. Yeah, and we're gonna rest for a minute. Yeah, or we're gonna get up <laughs> yeah. out of your walker and we're gonna walk to the couch. 
and then rest for a minute. It's mm-hmm. all resistance training. It's yeah. all like fitness. It's just disguised as daily activities. Yeah. So if you can get ahead of that earlier, those daily activities don't become a, a daunting task. Yeah, yeah. And You're living you your life. If you just become more weird. of that that functional human being, you can still get up and off the ground mm-hmm. if you were to fall on ice. And yeah. If you do fall, okay, you have more muscle tissue and your bones are denser, you're not going to break something right off the bat if you yeah. hit the ground. Or right. If you hit the ground and brace yourself there, you're not going to shatter your wrist. But you got to be right? able to, you got to be able to have that knowledge, I think, earlier. Yeah. You know, no, if, that's you're, a, that's if you a, have that insight if, by the time you're 30s, 40s, time. 50s, it makes it easier when you're 60s, 70s, 80s to yeah. be active. Another, yeah. another point to our consistency over intensity. Yeah. Think of yeah. Two times a week for thirty years, mm-hmm. consistently doing that. How much growth? How much more resilient your body's going to be? And what do you think about like? Uh, so this is another one where in my mind, like people see the extremes, right? Yeah. So you see like powerlifters, who are their whole game are just getting as strong as they can under the bar. By some of the times where people have pushed extreme skeletal issue and scream like weight bearing issues, you'll see them be hobbled, or you see extreme right. impact athletes like. <clears throat> football players have bad knees and stuff in their older age but those are the people who are so far extreme <laughs> yeah. the one percent yeah and like personally that themselves. ronnie coleman yeah. documentary yeah. huge i got Everyone so many about messages it. about that like you shouldn't you stop lifting so heavy i wish you wouldn't be deadlifting four or five hundred pounds like you're gonna end up like ronnie yeah yeah you understand ronnie was 800 pound squatter for reps two three times a week yeah, yeah. and he, he was, was on massive amounts case. of hormones that he's still on yeah. because his body literally lost its ability to like produce that yeah yeah and he did something that no human's been able to do so we're saying ever we're saying you can't look at that <laughs> sedentary scary weights ronnie coleman like just it's a simple solution just yeah like, yeah go here don't need to be here here like you want to be in the middle well it's crazy to me and i, I it's kind of true for all of these the myth is that you shouldn't lift weights mm-hmm. if you're older because it'll harm you when it's truly the opposite. Truly it's not opposite. only a myth. It's not it's just like, oh, actually, it's not that bad for you. Yeah. It's like truly opposite. I, I find the same kind of for the youth. Like, I think it is very beneficial to start yeah. when you're youth. Mm-hmm. I think it's truly opposite. And for ladies, I think it's very beneficial for you to weight lift yeah. um, rather than saying it's too bulky. Like, no, it's not that you won't get so bulky. It's that you should for sure lift yeah because and it's men, for sure going to make you a better athlete for sure going to make you more less injury prone it's just like it's not only are they myths being busted it's the complete opposite yeah, of yeah. what people are saying or messages that are being conveyed yeah which is very interesting yeah it's hard it's hard i mean to hear things like that when you're in our world but again like if you were in our world you can understand why people would be paranoid about those things yeah i mean so there's just so many outlets for information and yeah, those have been yeah. circled around for how many years it's hard to it's hard to disprove them like that it's like you're guilty until proven innocent and you have to create like you said you have to present all of this information in order to disprove one thing that you saw in the news yeah mm-hmm. and we, one thing that the gym and, bro told you and we come off looking um, cynical cynical or arrogant by saying like you're wrong you yeah. like how, I mean, yeah. that's insulting for anybody to say this is what I believe and then you say you're wrong like that's a, gonna always create yeah, I mean, an obstacle yeah <laughs> but so we're at, like let's shift that conversation for the final piece of this is like where do you think how do these myths get created and um, how do you become a better learner from exercise uh, to become beneficial to yourself because ultimately you're the person individually who's going to dictate how your story goes mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. before we move on there yeah. myth number three there we go. Oh, awesome. cool. Like that. for us, cool. Thank special. You. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta close it out. Right, now go. On. Um, so I think that the information that, especially online and especially these days, yeah. I think that no matter what information you see, if you're gonna decide to make this into your daily regimen, yeah. I think you have to do your own research. I mean, I can't attest to that enough. You, you can't just see something online and believe it yeah. immediately. Yes, if you're coming to a credible source. Yeah that you trust and that has proven that they are a credible source, yeah. um, whatever that means to you, yeah, then I mean, yes, the you, topic. right. Yeah. Then yes, you can believe it and maybe not do as much due diligence. But let's say you see something online or on TV or a, a major news source, you have to look into it yourself mm-hmm. before you simply say, you're right. My kid's not gonna train because it's gonna stunt their growth and that's that. Yeah. Yeah. There's just Ask so much questions. finality 
and so many people like saying absolutes. so many absolutes are yeah. crazy and especially in the news they want absolutes because it triggers like uh it triggers the emotion yeah saying like oh yeah. you're right i'm never gonna yeah. you know what and I mean? extreme I'm, statements easier to get traction off of them attention maybe yeah. but in yeah, some you cases people that are saying yeah. that yeah. Yeah. an article that yeah an say. article that says Weightlifting could be beneficial, but it could also be harmful. But it's no, way gonna... worse than saying <laughs> never lift or right. you'll die. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean that kind of bleeds into like what what qualifies as like a credible source. Yeah. And so you guys state your opinion on it, but I think my opinion is their level of like true education. And mm-hmm. everybody knows in our field, there's kind of a crapshoot. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. It's relatively new, but. Yeah. It should have a, probably at least a bachelor's in exercise science, kinesiology, movement mm-hmm. science, some, whatever you want to call it. Hopefully a credited certification mm-hmm. like the NSCA or something similar, mm-hmm. ACSM, mm-hmm. Um, a, whatever else there is. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think if you're not at least one of, one of those two, it's probably room for you to say like, I'm going to ask somebody else or I'm going to look elsewhere. Yeah. Like I think you should be looking for things like that. Well, I think you combine the two. Like, there's no like absolute way for us to again like say this is how you learn better. Yeah. But I think the core fundamentals, like Jake was saying, is a healthy dose of skepticism yeah. as a learner is like going all the way back to you know the Greek philosophers is like the first law of like learning is you have to be a skeptic. Yeah. yeah. Don't just take information and say yes. Ask questions. And if yeah. people giving you the information are fine with asking questions, probably I personally would write them off. If you're not willing right. to have me question you and, and say, why are you saying this to me? Or where is yeah. that information coming from? And they just say, listen to me or else, I'm done with you. Not a viable source. Yeah. 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 And yours, for, for my mindset, like a credible resource would be like, if we're going academic, it has to be through a peer-reviewed process or somebody who has a, a very high level degree, like technically an expert in our school mindset would be like a PhD level or a doctorate level person. Mm-hmm. Trust mm-hmm. your doctors, trust your health professionals. The problem with our field, exercise, is that there's no, it's one of the few ex- like degrees I think where like somebody can go to school for four years, go to get a master's, go all these like levels, but they still need to retain the same certification process as like a personal trainer. Mm-hmm. So anybody can have the certification. Yeah, you so, can be a, you can be a business major. Yeah. And yeah. still be training people. Yeah. 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 So for me it's it's hard because like who's the who's the person that you can trust? So I would just say like for me personally on your point with who's the professionals is the people who are doing it every day. Yeah. If you if you look at somebody who's done this for X amount of years, like I mean you've been in the business for how long now? Total. Since two thousand twelve. So you're how long you've been in this? Same. So we've had people you guys have had obviously sustained a career because you're good at what you do and you trade good information and you create uh, a good community of information. So like that to me in my mind would make you guys credible. Yeah. Same thing with other trainers. If somebody has been in the field for 10 or 15 years, they're probably a good source of information. Right. You may have extreme cases again, but I'd say if you were to take all the professionals in the world and you said, have you been a trainer or giving people nutritional advice for five, six, seven years? Yeah. If you took all of them, I'd say 90% are gonna have credible information to share. You yeah. might have the ten percent friends that are trading bad information, but mm-hmm. you know it's hard to say. Yeah. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean people that you can just watch a Netflix documentary and believe <laughs> everything. That's, well, that's like, probably the oh, biggest yeah. part. Is like, unfortunately, we're not going to name any, but yeah. there's umpteen million Netflix documentaries or whatever that like people can kill those. They can live and die by those, but you right. cannot watch that. And flip a switch and say, right. I'm going vegetarian yeah. or I'm never eating meat again yeah. because I watched this. Like you have you, to I mean, dig deeper. The reason you're going to hurt yourself yeah. by yeah. doing that. Yeah. You're literally going to hurt yourself. I'm right. skeptical of it. <laughs> you yeah. just can't watch it and be like, that's, that's the, that's the holy grail right yeah. there. Yeah. And the reason we're so passionate and like emotional about these things is because that was yesterday. Literally A kid day. comes up to us in the gym and says, I'm going vegan. Yeah. And me and Mike like, just go, We knew right, right off the bat. Yeah. You watched documentary yep. I yeah. guarantee it and we I think it's our duty to question people through their own to almost yeah. make themselves a skeptic yeah. like teaching them to be a skeptic because we immediately go why You're yeah, teaching there's them no skeptic. really reason We're, and it's like well like if you if you on the scholarly side of it it was horrible arguments yeah. 
But yes. like they did a really good job at directing and producing that movie, so mm -hmm. I can see where you come from, and they feed right. off people like that. It right. kind of like it's the number one reason why you learn math in school. Yeah. And so if you go give somebody a twenty, and it was ten dollars, <laughs> and they give you eight dollars change, you know, or whatever that you know what I mean. Yeah. But they got you got screwed. Yeah. You just have to have that basic level of knowledge, and like if you don't know this stuff, you're going to get taken advantage of. And the Netflix documentary people know that, yeah. that we can right. take advantage they're, of they're 60% of the documentary. Their job is to sell yeah. right. people to see And most views. of them have a vested right. interest yeah. in their own businesses and whatever. Pe like, people in exercise communities who have like influencers on social media who are creating exercises are making money off of views. Yeah. Yes. Like, you don't yeah. make views Do they off have your best <laughs> interest yes. in mind? Yeah. Like, you personally, yeah. do they have your best interest in mind? Yes fair to an extent to trust them when if people, you have a personal relationship when with people them. are selling the bow flex they'd always have those guys that were super ripped when i was a kid and i was like <laughs> yeah the yeah, bow flex yeah we're all guilty of that <laughs> that's, <laughs> the, that's the same with the instagram girls that have huge butts yeah. and they're just using a band yeah. and they're never lifting weights yeah and they're saying the same thing so people i think a big thing to mention is that people are getting shoved so much information in their face that if you're not a skeptic i mean how do you know which direction to go yeah if you don't, like you said, whoever's out for best interest, well, you know that for sure that's you. Yeah. You are out for your own best interest, so... You protect what your own program. Yes, <laughs> you protect yourself. Protect your own. <laughs> by yeah. doing this research. Yeah. So, yeah. Myth, so myths are generally things that are just like passed down from a non-credible source. And uh, people who aren't practicing good habits of learning will then trade that information and then it make us uh, stress out over. People who want to make a lot of conversations. Good provide good conversations. Yeah. Fun us. Our media guys looking at us like we're um, way over the time limit. So <laughs> um, we'll end it here. Um, if you have any exercise myths or questions that you guys want us to address or bring up, it would be some great content for our Q and A segment or. Uh, anything down the road so the if, if you're one of the five people who are watching this right now please, <laughs> uh, please send us a uh, video um, but awesome stuff guys we'll probably we'll probably do another segment on this with yeah. with further yeah. uh, myths busted yeah, down yeah. The road. ask your I questions like it. send it to us we do read them yeah so yeah we'd love to answer them cool so thanks for watching guys mike jake thank you peace